Perfect. So it's, it's a great pleasure. It's my pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Bill Andrews. Uh, Dr. Bill Andrews will be providing the keynote talk of the event. Um, Dr. Bill, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for joining us. And Dr. Bill Andrews is, I'll, I'll make a very short introduction. There was so much to talk about Dr. Andrews, but I'll make just a short introduction. Dr. Bill Andrews is the founder and CEO of Sierra Sciences, a company focused on finding ways to extend human lifespan and health span through telomere maintenance. As a scientist, athlete, athlete and executive, um, Dr. Andrews continuously pushes the envelope and challenges convention. He has been featured in Popular Science, The Today Show, and numerous documentaries on the topic of life extension, including most recently the movie The Immortalists, in which he was co-starred co with Dr. Aubrey Gray. Bill is also a um, named inventor of more than 50, that's 5-0, <coughs> 50 US issued patents on telomerase and author of numerous scientific research studies published in peer-reviewed scientific journals. Dear Dr. Andrews, once again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us, and the stage is yours. All right, thank you. Uh, I want to begin with um, asking the question, uh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why have I been obsessed with curing aging since I've been 10 years old, and why have I spent the last 30 years focused on trying to find a cure for aging? And one of the key reasons is that a lot of really great things are gonna happen in the future. And this is an example of where we're gonna meet intelligent life in outer space one day. And when that happens, I wanna be there. That's the bottom line. I also, I love living. Um, I love people that love living and I, I don't want living to ever be less lovable for anybody just because of aging. And people take it for granted too much uh, that living is one of the greatest things that ever happened. And we just don't want to let it get thrown away. So I'm a member of two organizations on the subject of living. One is the Coalition of, for Radical Life Extension. The other one is the Transhumanist Party. So I'm, I'm interested in not just in extending healthy lifespan. I'm also interested in, in, in enhancing healthy lifespan too. So I'm a member of both of these organizations. But the key word here is radical. Uh, that's a lot of my research. I'm, I'm not just looking for the little tweaks and stuff like that, trying to make us help, live healthier a little bit longer. I'm, I'm going for the long road here. Um, my company is Sierra Sciences. We're in Reno, Nevada. We're a 10,000 square foot research facility. Uh, we have just about every piece of scientific equipment you would ever need to do anything like the uh, research in aging. Uh, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. But I want to say that our goal, our one and only goal, is to find a cure for aging. And I don't think anybody here is going to not know which photo of Betty White here was taken first. But that's what I call aging. And <clears throat> the, what I call a cure for aging is doing the exact opposite. I'd like to see somebody like Betty White at, at I think she's 95 there, go to be 25. Uh, it's, it's also called reversing aging. I use the term curing aging because I'm not a semantics expert. But this is what I'm doing. I am, my company is focused on trying to cure aging. This is what I call radical. Okay, we are not going after just the simple things. And there's a lot of biomarkers. We use like at least 160 of them in our studies. But this is the biomarker that I'm most interested in. I call it the Betty White test. If nothing, if if anybody ever claims to have found a cure for aging, as far as I'm concerned, they have not succeeded unless they have shown that their cure can pass the Betty White test. So last year at Healthy Masters, I made two announcements. One is I said that we were gonna be treating our first patient in early 2020. Well, it's now late 2020. Uh, I also said that, and if you look at what's written in red at the bottom, we would have a pill that you could swallow that would cure aging in one to three years, assuming we had the appropriate funding. When either one of those happened because the appropriate funding was never raised. Okay, so what I would like to do today, since I can't give you updates on all the stuff that I was hoping to give you, I'd like to just talk about what we're doing uh, and how our, our company operates. As I said, we're Sierra Sciences in Reno, Nevada. We do discovery research, that's all we do. We don't do any marketing, we don't do anything. We just do research in the lab to discover things. And then we, we license them to somebody else 
to do the marketing. We, when we make discoveries, we will not be the ones that you will buy it from. You'll buy it from companies like BioViva, which is one of the companies that we support more than above any other company. Companies like that, uh, we don't have any competition. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me to be competing with anybody that could possibly cure my aging. So we work with anybody that wants to work with us. So this is, but we only do research. Uh, you might find that some of our partners that market some of our products might compete with one another, but we don't, we don't actually uh, compete whatsoever. Our major goal, as I mentioned, is to discover a pill that will allow somebody to pass the Betty White test. That's what we're doing. And we get all of our funding from go-to-market partners. Uh, we had investors. I raised over $30 million through investors uh, during our first 10 years. I'm happy to say that I have uh, bought them all out now. And as a result, we're operating independent of investors and getting our, all of our funding from go-to-market partners, which I will be discussing a little more in a second. Right now, matter of fact. So we get uh, uh, our funding from go-to-market partners. So when, as I said, we discover things, then we look for somebody else that might want to license them. These are what we call go-to-market partners, and then they will get a royalty. But the key here is that whatever we do for humans, we can also do for pets too. So we are very, very interested in everything for pets also. Our, what we do is we first discover the product, then we license it to somebody else. We receive a 10% gross profits typically from their profits. And then we use those to fund our research. That's our business model. Uh, so which actually gives us quite a lot of independence to be able to work with whoever we want to and do whatever we think we need to. Uh, and we're not 100%, we're not at all focused on what's our quickest return on investment. Our mission is to find a cure for aging and that's our focus. Now, I'd mentioned the, the list of go-to-market partnerships. The top two are our main ones, the main ones we're after, uh, mostly because they'd be semi-inexpensive and available for everybody. Uh, those are pharmaceutical telomerase inducers. I'll be discussing that in a few minutes too. And also nutraceutical telomerase inducers. It'd be nice to find a, a nutraceutical that was potent enough to reverse aging, uh, but uh, nutraceuticals are natural. And as soon as you do anything to modify them, they're not natural anymore, they become a pharmaceutical. So I, I'm, I, I'm expecting that our pharmaceutical research will probably take the lead in this, but it'd be great to come up with a nutraceutical. Uh, I'd like to spend a few minutes just describing who I am. I'm the president and CEO of Sierra Sciences. As Nuno mentioned, uh, we were founded in 1999. I am by trade a medical researcher. I've been involved in a lot of different biotech uh, things for the last 40 years. I actually became a senior scientist in my first biotech company 40 years ago. I've been uh, involved in a lot of major blockbusters in biotech listed here that have gone through clinical studies. Uh, so I've had a lot of experience with clinical studies. But in the last 30 years, I have focused 100% of my time on curing aging. And the toughest part has been finding the funding. I don't wanna go back to resorting to investors. I'd like to continue getting our funding from go-to-market partners. My education is I have a PhD in molecular and population genetics, uh, which means that I'm, I study genes, but at the same time, I also am experienced in evolution. Population genetics is actually the study of evolution. My bachelor's degree was in biology and psychology. So I, I do uh, study a lot of the psychology of telomere biology. Uh, and my minor was in statistical theory, which you'll, you'll see becomes important later on in this discussion. I've been in biotech for 38 years, that should be 39 now, but almost 40. Uh, my, uh, besides aging, I've been uh, focused a lot on inflammation, cancer, and heart disease, among other things. I was awarded second place for National Inventor of the Year in 1997 for my cancer research. Um, I'm also an ultra marathon runner. I believe one of the best things we can do is, is uh, for our health is, is exercise, as long as you keep it fun. Uh, I've been a, mentioned in, and been in two documentaries, one of them that uh, Nuno mentioned already called The Immortalist. Uh, the other ones, uh, that's, and The Immortalist is mostly about my research. Uh, the High is about uh, my running. That's where I've, I ran uh, 138 miles through the Himalayas of Northern India at 18,000 feet. And I did that nonstop. So there's a documentary, you might get a kick out of watching that too. I'm not gonna say that was the healthiest thing I ever did, but. Uh, 
Uh, you can't always be 100% healthy if you're going to enjoy living. That's the point of living a long time if you're not living, right? Um, <clears throat> I'm an author of two books. One is called Curing Aging, and the other is called Telomere Lengthening. But the bottom line is that through all my research, et cetera, and studying aging, I've come to the conclusion that there's probably a lot of things that cause aging, but nothing else will ever cure aging unless we also, in addition to whatever else we do, stop telomere shortening. This is a clock that's ticking inside of us that is controlling our aging, and we have to figure out a way to control this clock. Even if it's not the cure for aging, we have to combine it with something else to cure aging. We still, that will not work unless we find a way to prevent telomere shortening. No other theory of aging is this absolute. You can't say anything about any other theory that says that it's dependent as much on anything else as every theory is dependent upon finding a way to prevent telomere shortening. So now let's get, oh, I also wanna say that not all animals uh, age by telomere shortening. In fact, uh, 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 something that most people don't know is that rodents don't age by telomere shortening hardly at all. Just, there's little signs of telomere shortening. So most rodents, including mice, uh, are not good models for studying uh, uh, aging or telomere shortening unless you use engineered mice. Uh, but, but the animals that have been shown to age by telomere shortening include primates, including humans, dogs, cats, horses, sheep, pig, and deer. So some of those are some of our favorite pets, which is a good thing. So what's a telomere? Um, to answer that, we have to zoom in on a human being. We see first that a human is made up of 100 trillion cells. And we got and, and most theories on why we age say that we age because our cells age. So we got to figure out what, how to focus on making these cells not age. We zoom in any further, we see that every cell contains a nucleus. And inside these nuclei are found our chromosomes shown in blue. I'm going to zoom in on one of the chromosomes. Chromosome is made up of two arms, a top arm and a bottom arm. Uh, inside these arms are, contains our DNA that gives us, it contains our genes that give us our, our eye color, hair color, et cetera. It's like a long string of beads, about a million uh, beads in length. The beads are called bases. And <clears throat> there, think of this thing as a shoelace. So along, along the beads are the genes, but think of this whole long string of beads as a shoelace. And at the tips of our shoelaces are called are found aglets that protect our shoelaces. Well, our chromosomes have the same thing. They're called our telomeres. The telomeres are the very tips of our chromosomes and they are the aglets of our chromosomes. Now, if we zoom in on one of the telomeres, we find that a telomere is about 15,000 bases in length, at least when we were first conceived. And this is where all the trouble starts to begin. This is because Every time our cells divide, each and every time our cells divide, our telomeres get a little bit shorter. And there's nothing that we can do about it, tragic. Okay, so from the time we were first conceived to the time we become a newborn baby, there's been so much cell division that our telomeres have already shortened from 15,000 bases down to 10,000 bases. And the problem doesn't end there because we still have a lot of growing up to do. We have a lot of healing to do, wounds to heal, immune functions to fight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. As a result, our telomeres get shorter and shorter. And when they get down to 5,000 bases, our cells lose the ability to function and we die of old age. This is a clock that's ticking inside of all of us. Let me go over that again. We're conceived at 15,000 bases. We're born at 10,000 bases. And we die of old age at 5,000 bases. And these four, you know, there's practically nothing we can do about this. I'm gonna talk about a few things that we can lately do. Uh, but uh, this is a clock that really controls our lifespan. Uh, if we had the perfect genetics and led the perfect lifestyle, this clock would limit our total maximum lifespan, theoretical maximum lifespan to 125 years. Okay, <clears throat> it's not just aging. It's all, there's a lot of different diseases that are caused by telomere shortening. Uh, these are called telomeropathies, uh, telomere shortening diseases. In practically every age-related disease you've ever heard of, even non-age-related diseases like the common cold, have been shown to be connected to the length of the telomeres. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of scientific peer-reviewed studies uh, showing this all over the place. So bottom line is bad things happen when telomeres get short. That's the rule that I am trying to break. I'm trying to make it so that we don't have, well, I want bad things, 
still be bad to have short telomeres, but I want to figure out a way to prevent us from ever having short telomeres. So let's talk about the go-to-market partnership opportunities that I talked about before. Okay, or at least some of them. One of them is measuring telomere lengths. Uh, now, we all know that there's already a lot of methods out there. People can go get their telomeres length measured anywhere they want, uh, but none of them are really very good. Okay, and this is a, now a telomere expert saying that the telomere tests out there are not very accurate. Okay, so <clears throat> this is an example of a typical publication on looking at telomere length versus some type of disease. In this case, this is uh, the uh, weight of a woman when she gives birth to a child and the, and the child's telomere length. Well, it's always really good because people, you, you'll see data like this all the time showing that there's, wow, a statistically significant correlation between telomere length and some health related aspect. But because of my background with statistical theory, stuff like that, I've become very well aware that statistical significance does not mean a strong relationship. In fact, what it means is that the relationship is not completely random. That's all it means. So when you actually so you see a line like this and they say it's statistically significant, that doesn't mean that everybody had the same results. When you see the actual data, you find that it's scattered all over the place. So yes, there's a correlation between telomere length and this particular health aspect, but it doesn't apply to everybody. You get your telomere length measured, you put it on the scale, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be like everybody else because there's so much variation in the data. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that we actually have 46 uh, telomeres in each of our cells. Uh, well, twice that when you when we count it as, as uh, two, two, two of every chromosome. We have uh, 46 different types of telomeres and uh, it might be that there's only one telomere that actually plays any role in our health. So what telomere is that? The other thing is that telomeres do change a lot. It's very, very difficult to measure them. That's why another reason why a lot of the tests are very inaccurate. But what we, oh, and let me just say before I talk about what we're going to do, there are other ways of measuring uh, aging uh, that might actually be better than telomere length. And, and Liz Parrish actually uh, mentioned that uh, uh, earlier uh, that uh, uh, they're doing, a, they have a test for DNA methylation. And I forget if I mentioned that uh, we are working with BioViva. It's one of the companies we support more than above anybody else. Uh, and what is, is, is but we are working with other companies too. Uh, there's also a, a company that's promoting now IgG glycosylation, which is actually looking very good in, this, in the, if you do meta-analysis of scientific peer-reviewed literature, you find this is a good way to measure uh, aging too. So I recommend these. In our studies, we do all three. But we have developed a method of measuring telomere lengths based on long read DNA sequencing. Uh, you've probably heard of the fact that DNA sequencing has become so good now that people are now publishing uh, telomere to telomere sequences of chromosomes. But they aren't measuring telomeres through telomeres, okay? And that's because they don't have the ability to be able to read through a telomere and know that they reached the end or just the uh, reaction just terminated by itself. So <clears throat> we have figured out a way to actually allow long read DNA sequencing to know that they have reached the end and they can also know which chromosome that they're reading. And so we can get actual data showing every single telomere, which chromosome, what its length is, and we'll know that this is the true length, not just a false uh, uh, discontinuation of the reaction. So this is an example of where we are looking for go-to-market partners. We don't wanna market this ourselves. We wanna focus on the research. So we're looking for people that might wanna market such a product. <clears throat> and then, so next subject I wanna talk about is controlling telomere lengths. Well, uh, telomere in a, in a normal human being, telomere or aging is like a one-sided tug of war. Telomere shortening is like a one-sided tug of war. There's bad things that will actually uh, increase your rate of telomere shortening. And there's good things you can do to help slow it down, but it's all on one side. So you, we actually have our telomeres getting shorter and shorter without anything to uh, counter that. Now we can do things to reduce the number of people pulling uh, and th that, that's called the basal level telomere shortening, but it still limits our lifespan to a maximum of 125 years. Now we have compiled a whole lot of different reagents, uh, supplements and stuff like that that can help 
uh, decrease the rate of telomere shortening. Most of them work by reducing inflammation and oxidative stress. Uh, but besides those, I mean, those, those include the antioxidants, omega-3s, vitamin D3 shown on the left here. But there's a lot of other things that you can do to also decrease your rate of telomere shortening, including exercise that I won't go into with long list here. But again, we have a, a, a thing, a package of things that people can take when we're looking for go-to-market partners that might want to provide those. Other things that we can do to help keep our telomeres long are based on the fact that there are cells in our body that don't have telomere shortening. Uh, and this is important because if they did, uh, our kids would be born with shorter telomeres than we have and their kids would be born with shorter telomeres than they. And we would have been extinct for, as, a, as a species a long time ago, just, <clears throat> just because uh, cell division is involved in reproduction. And if every, if every time a cell in cell reproduction divided, the telomeres got shorter, we wouldn't have any chromosomes left. So about 30 years ago now, I'd say uh, in my research at Geron Corporation, I discovered human telomerase. My team discovered human telomerase. This is a cartoon showing this here. Uh, the green squiggly thing is the DNA and the factory looking thing at the right there is the telomerase enzyme that is actually lengthening the telomere. So in that tug of war, we would now have something on the other side. We have, <clears throat> we have done, we have done a lot of research on two different ways of producing telomerase in human cells. One is called gene induction, and the other one's called gene delivery or gene therapy, which Liz Parrish talked about. Um, and again, we're looking for go-to-market partners in addition to uh, also working with BioViva. But this is the way it works. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have our genes and uh, that give us our hair color and eye color. This is now the gray bar is a chromosome. One of the genes on our chromosomes on actually chromosome five, uh, the uh, P arm of chromosome five, there's a gene called telomerase. And that gene is actually shut off because of a repressor that binds to a regulatory element, which is like a light switch that turns the gene on and off. So in almost all of our cells, except for our reproductive cells, this gene is there, but it's completely shut off by this repressor. So what we do with our research, with our uh, gene, uh, <clears throat> lab in our labs here is we lurk, search for pharmaceuticals and natural products shown here in green that would dislodge that repressor and turn the gene on. And we have found quite a few of these things so far. Uh, this is, involves a lot of different disciplines. We have cell biology, molecular biology, different di departments back and forth. We, we discover chemicals that uh, will work. Then they go back to the different departments. We, we are shown at the bottom is our high, our high throughput robots that actually do our screening for us. Uh, of course, we have to have humans babysitting them because they make too many mistakes on their own. But um, we do have a pretty good way of actually testing for natural products and, and synthetic chemicals for anything that might dislodge that repressor to turn the gene on. And so as a result, we are now putting somebody on the other side of that tug of war, but really so far, all we've been able to do is slow slow the telomere shortening down. So a combination of everything that I've mentioned before uh, to reduce oxidative stress and inflammation combination with uh, one of these uh, natural products or pharmaceuticals would be a way to even slow telomere shortening even down further and could provide us a way of living longer than 125 years. Again, we're looking for go-to-market partners because as I said, we do, not, we do not want to do the marketing ourselves. It'll distract us too much away from our research and our research is to find that ultimate pill that's going to pass the Betty White test. The other way of actually providing telomerase to your cells is gene therapy, ACA gene delivery. And the, my slides here aren't as good as what Liz Parrish showed, but uh, uh, this is now a picture of a human cell. Think of it as a soap bubble. Okay, because human cells are pretty much like soap bubbles. Okay, so that's a human cell. There's also now imagine another smaller soap bubble. And this is the gene therapy. And inside this gene therapy is an, a gene or an mRNA or some other type of RNA that encodes for human telomerase. Well, uh, th this is what Liz Parrish does. Uh, and what mine's, my, my diagram is a little simpler than hers. Uh, so as we know that when two soap bubbles come in, in contact with each other, they fuse. And that's how the gene gets into the cell. And it's really that simple, that's all it is. Once the gene gets into the cell or the mRNA gets into the cell, it can produce telomerase. 
And because we can engineer this gene or mRNA to, to be very powerful, we can produce lots of telomeres. And so that's how gene therapy is working. Again, this is the only thing that's ever been discovered that actually will provide more people on the right-hand side of this tug of war than the left-hand side. And as a result, telomeres get longer. We have shown this for uh, all kinds of different gene therapy methods for the last 25, 30 years, uh, uh, mostly in vitro and human cells in Petri dishes, skin grown on the back, human skin grown on the back of mice, and engineered mice, we've been able to show that actually using gene therapy can deliver enough telomeres to actually make telomer telomeres longer and actually in every way imaginable uh, show signs of reversing aging. Again, we're looking for go-to-market partners. And then, and then there's pet products, as I mentioned. I don't, I, want, I don't want people to forget about that. We, I am absolutely very interested in uh, the health of my own pet. Uh, this is a picture of my dog, Dash. And we are actually, we have things right now that can be sprinkled onto dog food or cat food or horse food that will provide uh, induction of telomerase to help keep the telomeres long in our pets too. And again, we're looking for go-to-market partners. So <clears throat> on the list of go-to-market partners, if anybody wants to learn more about what opportunities exist here, because I have only scratched the surface of telling you about them, go to my website, www.sierrasciences.com. Sierra like the Sierra Mountains, sciences like sciences.com. So, and then also don't forget that there's a lot of disease targets too. So we have all these different tools that we can do to lengthen telomeres, but we have a lot of, somebody who's very interested in studying COPD or Alzheimer's or liver cirrhosis or macular degeneration. These tools can be used to help with those diseases. And I've only shown, there's so many more that's not even shown on this list. Uh, for, I'd recommend for further reading, I've written two books on uh, telomere lengthening. One's called Telomere Lengthening, the other one's called Curing Aging. Uh, and one way or another, somebody's gonna pass this Betty White test and aging will be cured. See you there. Funding is the only obstacle we have to getting there. Thank you very much. <laughs>